Question 3. This question is quite easy for those who uh, really understand and can do uh, on your own. Uh, you can skip this uh, video. Uh, this video uh, just for those who really need that or re need the extra explanation. Let's start. Potassium chlorate KCLO3 is widely used as oxidizing agent to make uh, oxygen. Define oxidizing agent there. For this oxidizing agent, uh, is the one that oxidizes others itself get reduced. Mm. For example, like uh, fluorine. Fluorine we know that uh, is the uh, the element that uh, always uh, try to get electrons and form the fluoride. So we know that now the fluorine is from 0 to negative 1 itself get reduced so it's undergo reduction and you need to gain electrons in order to do this so the electrons is from others means others need to be like oxidized to supply these electrons to the fluorine so means when the fluorine get reduced means uh, it's oxidized others at the same time so this is a definition, substance that oxidizes others and itself get reduced. Part B, KCLO3 decomposed when heated. MnO2 catalyzes uh, this exothermic decomposition reaction. And we know that catalyst always lower the Ea. Uh, let the reaction happen faster. Complete and label the diagram. Uh, in the figure 3.1 to show the effect of the manganese uh, oxide. This one is very easy. You need to draw, draw two curves. One with higher Ea, another one with uh, lower Ea. The higher Ea is without the MnO2 uh, catalyst. The lower Ea, this one, the dotted line, so is uh, with the manganese oxide. Means with lower Ea, it can uh, it can let the reactions happen faster. Part C. When KClO3 is heated without catalyst, KClO4 and KCl4. So this is the equation. Explain why this reaction is a disproportionation reaction. Then we need to find the elements that undergo disproportionation reaction. So it's uh, obviously the uh, chlorine. Chlorine is from positive 5 uh, because oxygen is negative 6. Potassium is positive 1, so chlorine is positive 5 before reaction. After reaction, then uh, it will form positive 7 okay, because oxygen is negative 8. Potassium is positive 1, therefore chlorine is positive 7. And another product also uh, is, has the uh, chlorine. So uh, is the uh, negative one okay, because uh, the K this potassium is a uh, uh, positive one, so it's negative one. Means now chlorine from positive five now from positive seven is get oxidized, and the chlorine now is uh, at the same time from negative one, from positive five negative one. So uh, oxidation number in, uh, decreases, so it's reduction. So we know that now chlorine is both oxidized. So the numbers is from positive five to positive seven and reduced. Okay, oxidation number is from positive five to negative one. Part D. Now we have this uh, re uh, reaction. Uh, the KClO3 uh, reacts with the glucose form the CO2 and H2O and KCl. And at this temperature, 630 Kelvin, the CO2 and H2O, they are gases. So means later when we use a combined gas law, we must consider both because both they are gases now. Use the ideal gas equation to calculate the volume in meter cube of one mole of gas at 630 Kelvin and 1 times 10 power 5 Pascal. 
So this is very easy. First, you need to start with the uh, combined gas law, PV equal to nRT. So V is equal to nRT over P. Just need to substitute the N. N is already mentioned, one mole, so it's one. R will be provided, no worry, 8.31. And T is the uh, 630 Kelvin. And the pressure is 1 times 10 power for 5 Pascal. So these are all the standard unit. No need to really do conversion. You just substitute. So you get uh, 0 0.0524. So this is a volume uh, in meter cube. 5 gram of glucose reacts completely with um, modern KCL O3. Use your answer to D1, okay, which is the 0 0.0524. Calculate the total volume of gas released at 630 Kelvin and 1 times 10 power 5 Pascal. So we no need to use this. We just use the volumes that obtained in the previous part. And you need to calculate the, um, the molar mass of the glucose, so which is 180, and get the mole, 5 gram over 180, you will get uh, 0 0.02777. After that, uh, you or you can just use this for calculation. Total volume of gas, therefore, is equal to what? The moles of the glucose, which is this one, 5 over 180 times chaffed, because chaffed moles of the gases, 6 mole plus 6 mole, chaffed moles, and times the mole or volume for 1 mole. So you get 0 0.0175 meter cube. Part E. The structure of glucose is shown in this figure 3.2. Complete table 3.1 to identify the numbers of primary, secondary, ter and tertiary alcohol. This is quite uh, easy. Uh, you need to identify it, uh, which uh, type is it. Now, for if we start from left, okay, this OH bonded to this carbon. This carbon is CH2. And this carbon is just bonded to one alkyl group. So therefore, this OH is primary. And this OH bonded to this carbon. This carbon now is bonded to one and two alkyl group. So therefore, this, this alcohol is secondary alcohol. And this alcohol bonded to this carbon. This carbon also bonded to two alkyl group, so this is secondary. This OH bonded to this carbon. This carbon also is, has two alkyl group bonded to it, so it's secondary as well. This OH bonded to this carbon. This carbon also got one and another one alkyl groups. So therefore, this is uh, secondary. So how many secondary? So one, two, three, Four. So it's four here. And primary is just one. Tertiary is zero. Part two. Separate samples of aqueous glucose are tested with the reagent uh, shown in this table 3.2. Complete the table 3.2. Uh, write no reaction if uh, applicable. Again, is the sample of glucose, and this glucose uh, is has a primary and secondary alcohol, and of course aldehyde. There. The first uh, reagent and the condition acidified KMnO4 and warm. And we know that KMnO4 is an oxidizing agent, so it will oxidize uh, primary and secondary alcohol. So after it's oxidized the alcohol itself will get reduced. So it's from this positive 7 to positive 2, which is colorless. So what we can see is solutions turn from purple to colorless.
from this uh, MnO4 negative to Mn2 positive. Second reagent and condition, Fillings reagent and warm. Fillings reagent, we know that uh, is the uh, compound or is the reagent with the uh, copper 2. Copper 2 is uh, uh, the blue color, right? So after that, uh, because in this um, glucose, again, it has aldehyde group. So aldehyde will react with uh, this um, Fillings reagent. And Felix reagent will oxidize uh, this aldehyde and itself will get uh, uh, reduced. So the copper 2 will reduce to copper plus. And this copper plus is uh, orange or red precipitate. So what you will see is it will form the orange or red precipitate. For the, the, this last uh, reagent and condition, so alkaline iodine and warm. Uh, this one we have to uh, refer back to this whether it has the methyl ketone or not. So this is not methyl ketone, this is aldehyde. And uh, none of this alcohol able to form the methyl ketone. Right? So therefore, uh, we know that uh, no reaction for the last one. And again, when you try to look for the uh, this, uh, uh, whether there is a reaction with alkaline iodines or not, this iodoform test, you have to uh, look for this methyl ketone group or this alcohol group, CHOH CH3. Part 3. There are many structure, structural isomers of this uh, glucose. Define structural isomer. Uh, molecules with the same molecular formula, means this one, but different structural formula. Uh, I give you one example is easier. Uh, let's say now we have this uh, C3H6O. Okay, it's a simple uh, molecule, and this uh, molecular formula it can form two different uh, the the compound uh, and functional group. So it can form propana and propanone. So these two they have different structural formula, but actually they share the same molecular formula. Uh, that's, that's why we call these two as structural isomer. Okay, that's all. Thank you.